Heading into this offseason, a lot of people had hope for what the Nationals could do. But as we sit here today, January 17th, I think we're disappointed in the way that this Nats offseason has been. You are Locked On Nationals, your daily Washington Nationals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you all for making Locked On Nationals your first listen every single day as we are free and available wherever you get your podcast. And I'm your host, Ryan Clary. You can catch me over on Twitter at RyanClary11 and as well as the show page at LO underscore Nationals. For all your latest Nationals news and notes, just make sure to check us out over on there. And while you're at it, search Locked On Nationals wherever you get your podcast, including on YouTube. Again, just search Locked On Nationals there and hit that subscriber button. Button later on in today's show, Sean Doolittle has been hired by the organization to kind of be a middleman of sorts between analytics and coaching, and as well as the players. We'll discuss that role and kind of what it means from the organization, and really kind of my tinfoil hat theory of what could be happening next. We'll get to that in the third segment of today's show. Also, we're going to look at Lane Thomas. Can Lane Thomas? Build off of 2023, heading into 2024. What will he be able to do? What will be better? What could be worse? We'll discuss that and kind of get into what the numbers say about Lane Thomas a little later on in the show. But let's kind of take a debrief here. This Nationals offseason, a lot of people were expecting some different things. We thought that the Nationals could be spending, kind of getting back to their old ways, and maybe even just maybe if they spent wisely enough, kind of were aggressive enough, in free agency, maybe they would have made an argument to make a postseason push at some point this season, but ultimately, it's not really seen that way right now. But today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Just visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get started. So with today's show, listen. Going back into the back in October, early on when the regular season's wrapping up, a lot of people, including myself, didn't think it was crazy to say that, yeah, the Nationals, they could be on the likes of a Reese Hoskins. The Nationals, they could be in the market for maybe a starting pitcher. Nothing crazy, but still someone who you could make a difference for, someone that you could actually put up in the Nationals team store and not really feel some sort of way about it. As this offseason has kind of transpired, One thing has stayed clear. That is not the case. That has not been the case whatsoever, in fact. The Nationals, they haven't really made any splashy signings. The splashiest of the splashy moves was signing Nick Senzel, a former first-round pick. That's really it. The Cincinnati Reds moved off of Nick Senzel for one reason and one reason only. It's because he was not productive. They have saw better than the organization. They've got better prospects coming up. Therefore, they decided to move on from him, and that is why he signed here on a major league deal. Nick Senzel is not a splashy move. It's just simply not. Now, is it the market that the Nationals should be in? That's kind of an argument we'll tackle here in a few minutes, but still, you should be disappointed with the way that this Nationals offseason has gone. Simple as that. Now, in what ways should you be disappointed in? If the Nationals, if they were, let's say they did go out and sign Reese Hoskins, which, by the way, he's still a free agent. I'm not saying that's not going to happen, but it's very unlikely at this point. I think we can all agree on that page. But if the Nationals did, where would this team be? Would it be better? Of course, because he solves a lot of areas of need. He fits that first base mold. He's going to get power in this team, in this lineup. He's going to protect C.J. Abrams. going to protect Lane Thomas, Kibet Ruiz, all the different guys that you want to protect in this lineup. But ultimately, is he going to thread the needle and kind of get you to that 90, or not 90 win, God forbid that, 80 wins? Is he going to get you in that territory? Nah, I don't really think he does. So kind of going back to the original question, I am disappointed in what the Nationals have done. And the reason what they have done is that really what they haven't done. The Nationals, it is, have not spent their money in any way that you would kind of just be like, yes, this is what you should do. 
This is what rebuilding teams should do. You should try to replenish that lineup. You should try to protect your younger players and hopefully having them take those next steps up. Bryce Harper wouldn't have been Bryce Harper back in 2012 if it weren't for guys like Ryan Zimmerman around him, Jason Worth, in those lineups to where you kind of protect those guys because right now in this lineup, C.J. Abrams, he's got a target on his back. Teams aren't going to allow that guy to get on base. They're going to make sure any way, shape, or form that he is off the base path that he is not going to be the one doing damage. Lane Thomas, he's one of those guys as well right now where he might not take that next step up because he's got that target on his back. And with C.J. Abrams in particular here, he's a more talented player than Lane Thomas right now. Lane Thomas in itself, he's the kind of the guy who needs that protection in order to take those steps up, in order to have 28 home runs in one season as he did in 2023. Looking at this team, it's really just not about the disappointment. It really isn't. Because if you've kind of seen the way that this team has been trending over the last few years, you probably aren't too surprised with how this offseason has gone. But one thing's for sure is that the Nationals, they are closer. And they are inching closer as the days go by into being a contender again. But ultimately, it's not going to happen if you're not going to spend the money in free agency, because this national team, they've got a good farm, they've got a good farm system, they've got quality prospects. But also, with that said, it's a top heavy farm system. This isn't a loaded, deep farm system like the Dodgers or the Orioles, for that matter. It's a very top heavy farm system. Dylan Cruz at the top, James Wood, Brady House, Cade Cavalli. All those big names, those are big-time prospects that you can kind of look forward to and say, this is why they're one of the best farm systems in all of baseball. But ultimately, if those guys don't hit, or if one of those guys don't hit, you're going to have a little bit more holes than what you've anticipated. And when you have holes like that, when you maybe miss on prospects, that's when free agency comes into play. And also, just a matter of facts, when you're in a rebuild, I've always believed in this. Giving a guy like a Cody Bellinger this last offseason, giving someone like him or a Reese Hoskins this offseason, giving him that one-year deal, giving him a little bit more money than maybe he deserves, a rebuilding team, that is the smart thing to do. That's kind of where I'm a little disappointed in which this Nationals team haven't even really considered at this point. They just haven't done that. And I think people should be upset with that, by the way. I think people and fans in, in particular, they probably should be a little upset in which the way that the Nationals haven't necessarily spent in an aggressive manner. Because if the Nationals were to go that route, if they were to sign Reese Hoskins this offseason, number one, it makes the on-field product a lot better than what it has been. Number two, in this rebuild, if Reese Hoskins hits the way that he has been in the years past, if he does have that power come back after recovering off a torn ACL, you're going to have a blue chip kind of guy to trade at the deadline and get a decent prospect back in return. I don't think you're going to be getting anything crazy in return. You're not going to be getting a team's number one prospect, but you're going to be getting something a little bit better than what Jamar Candelario gave you last year. And as we've seen, DJ Hers is a pretty legit prospect at this point. That was a team's 16th best prospect in a pretty good farm system with the Cubs. So if the Nationals, if they can do that, that's when you, I think you would see kind of a little bit of a better, quicker process. Because right now, it hasn't been out all fluid. I thought the Nationals, that they would be in that market this year. And also, while being in the Nick Senzel market, being in that market, that's no real problem. Every team should be in that market trying to get guys that can rebound and then trade at the deadline when you're in this team's position. But also, on the other hand, being smart. And doing what's best for the organization. Not just saying, we can't necessarily afford this right now. Come on. That's a bad argument in the year of 2024. It just is. And yes, you may be getting ready to sell this team. But ultimately, you have to have two feet in the door. And I think that's what a lot of Nationals fans kind of come back to. Is that this team and this ownership situation, you can't necessarily say that they have all two feet in the zone here. You just can't. It doesn't feel that way. You've seen what it's like when the Lerner family has bought in. They, they're they aggressive. They make big moves. They make big splashes. We all high five. No one's complaining about them. But as we sit here today, it just hasn't really been that case. And you could say, well, it's because of bad contracts. And you're right. It is because of bad contracts. But also, 
You've got two teams here, or you've got really two seasons to get this right before you have to be better. And I think this Nationals team, while they are trending in the right direction, you should be a little disappointed with how this offseason went. It just simply was not good enough, and it has not thread the needle for what I've wanted. Dylan Floro, fine piece. Not all that flashy at the end of the day. Not really much to say for. We'll just have to see what transpires over 2024. Maybe we're wrong. and Maybe the Lerner family, they're right. Thank you all for making Locked On Nats your first listen every single day as we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Before we move on to discuss Lane Thomas, let me tell you guys about our good friends over at FanDuel. And guys, FanDuel, the NFL season is wrapping up. And while the postseason has started, let's get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose, because the app is so easy to use. And there are so many different ways to bet, like a live same game parlay, like I will be doing this weekend. You have the Lions, and of course, you've got the Lions at home. You cannot believe that. I'm going to take Jared Goff over on the passing yards and as well as the Lions money line. I am that confident that they get the win over Baker Mayfield and the Buccaneers. You should do that too. And also, if you're really feeling frisky, go to the Parlay tab. And when you do that, go to the Parlay hub, and that is where you can find the most popular parlays. That is a ton of fun. I can guarantee you that. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. Again, that is FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. And before we move on, let me tell you guys about our friends over at Ibotta. And the new year for many people means resolutions to save money. So stop shopping without getting anything in return, circuiting cash back on every purchase you make with Ibotta. Ibotta is a free app that gives you the most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies to toys. So you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing the average ibotta user earns 145 dollars per year that can cover the cost of an entire shopping trip buy out buy that flight you've been eyeing that game you're dying to go to or the fancy dinner that you've been craving right now ibotta is offering our listeners five dollars just for trying oh ibotta by using the code locked on mlb again that is code locked on mlb when you register just go to the app store or google play store and download the free ibotta app to start earning cash back and use code locked on MLB. That is I B O T T A in the Google Player App Store and use code locked on MLB. Next, we are getting into Lane Thomas and really what this offseason has held for him. Going into 2023, not a lot of people expected this kind of huge, really, really impressive offseason, a really impressive regular season from Lane Thomas, but what he delivered in 2023, maybe what you should be expecting going forward in 2024. But is that the case? And can he build off of the 2023 that he had? Well, first and foremost, there's a two tail story here. In years past, I remember looking at Lane Thomas's numbers and looking at his splits. I remember saying, listen, Lane Thomas, the really the trend that he has shown from 2019 to 2021, 2022, is that he starts off a little bit slow, once the summer comes in, that's when he heats up. Well, this last year, it was the exact opposite. First half of the season, Lane Thomas right here was damn good. First half of the season, that's kind of when Lane Thomas really had his best work. In May, that was when he was hottest. Went on that tear. He had an OPS over 900 at one point during the summer. And he was just killing the baseball. And everything just seemed amazing, especially considering the fact, and never forget this, he was traded for John Lester way back in the day. What a steal that was for by Chris. You're always going to look back at that deal and say, oh my God, Lane Thomas in return for John Lester. The dinosaur did not want to be here. 2021, what a disastrous year. You got back Lane Thomas, someone who should have been an all-star in the year of 2023 by looking at his numbers. And really just, if you're going by the numbers, simple as that, should have been an all-star. But the rest of that, that's history. Going into 2024, though, can he build off of 2023? And if he can build off of 2023, what will he get better at? One thing I look at with Lane Thomas is this. 
Lane Thomas is one of the faster outfielders in all of Major League Baseball. Now, I'm not saying he's in the top one percentile, but Lane Thomas is damn fast. One of the top 10 percentiles in all of baseball as far as speed goes and sprint speed goes, according to Baseball Savant. Lane Thomas only stole 20 bases in 2023. Now, I say only 20, still impressive nonetheless, but still, Lane Thomas has a little bit of room for improvement here. Now, some people may say, well, he's going to have to get on base more, and that is certainly correct. But ultimately, Lane Thomas, when he gets on base path, teams got to worry about him. Catchers, they've got to circle him in the lineup card. Pitchers, pitching coaches, all managers, they all got to circle Lane Thomas' name for what he can do in between the lines. Lane Thomas, again, not really much to improve on. You could say cut the strikeout rate, which is certainly one of those things. But I look at him and really kind of one of his main tools, which is his speed. He's got to really capitalize on that just a little bit more. Now, you could say that maybe kind of where he was in the lineup and really what was happening behind him in the lineup with Joey Manessis behind him or wherever it was that he doesn't really have all too much protection. Therefore, he can't really just run loosely the way that C.J. Abrams is doing from mid mid August all the way through the end of the season. But what Lane Thomas can do is again, if he does get on base a little bit more at a little bit of a higher clip, which again, I think he will be able to do, that is where you'll see him kind of take the next step in his game. I think that is when you'll start to see a little bit more national recognition because hitting 28 home runs in which he did this year, having a 2020 season with 20 stolen bases, 28 bombs, those are all great things. And in today's game, we've always talked about this. What is the tool that you really kind of want to marry in Major League Baseball? You want to marry the power tool as well as the speed tool. Lane Thomas, and I'm not going to say he's got some big, crazy power, but 28 home runs is nothing to play with. 20 stolen bases is nothing to play with. He's got both those tools at the tip of his fingers. Now, can he use that and use it consistently? That is where I think the best question is. But going forward with it, I think that is kind of where he can improve the most. In between the base path. Now, looking at the numbers and really looking at what everything he did well in the year of 2023, one of the things that I think stands out the most is obviously what he did against left-handed pitching. We've all talked about it, all the numbers, the batting average, the on-base percentage, the slugging, everything is better against left-handed pitching. But here's the thing. I think we all kind of overlook that. I think we all kind of overstate that, in my opinion. With right-handed batters, in which the way Lane Thomas is not a superstar, Simple as that. He's probably going to be a very good role player on a good baseball team, maybe. But ultimately, he's not going to be some superstar that you're going to be selling jerseys out the yin-yang for. But what Lane Thomas does, he hits right. He hits left-handed pitching. People act like that's some big, huge, just knock on Lane Thomas in his career. But ultimately, it's not. You're going to be facing lefties probably two of the five games that you play in. That means something. If Lane Thomas can do that, and by the way, his numbers are damn good against lefties, batting 332 with a 948 OPS compared to right-handed pitchers where he batted 242 with a 719 OPS. I'm not discouraged by that, though. And really, when you look at the numbers and what he did in-game, no matter if he's going to get a righty or a lefty, you probably look at these things like clutch stats and may say, it's pretty damn good. Because that's also what Lane Thomas did this year. In a lot of clutch situations, you would have number 28 up there, and ultimately he got the job done in a lot of different times. And if you look at the numbers, they kind of back that up as well. There's three different categories in which I looked at in his clutch stats that really kind of were eye-popping, in my opinion. Number one, two outs, runners in scoring position, had a 279 batting average and an 839 OPS. Late game and close, 287 batting average and an 832 OPS. And then in a tie game, a 311 batting average with an 825 OPS. I mentioned all the batting average because in those situations, you need hits. Lane Thomas, he got those hits. He got the job done in multiple big time scenarios. Now, is Lane Thomas, is he going to be the guy that in 2026, game seven of the World Series tie game that you want up at the plate? Hopefully you want Dylan Cruz. Hopefully you want James Wood. But still, Lane Thomas should not be forgotten about. Lane Thomas, and also we have even mentioned his glove, in which my opinion, the numbers they indicated this year, second and outfield assist in all Major League Baseball, 
Lane Thomas should have been a, a gold glover in right field. Simple as that. Should have been a gold glover this year. He was not because we all know it's a popularity contest. And Lane Thomas, he ain't going to be selling the Rawlings gold gloves the way that the others will. But the numbers, they back it up. You can talk about what he did at the plate this year, which he was marvelous at. But then also, don't forget the fielding because that's probably his most best thing about his game. He's got a cannon for an arm. He covers some range out there. And ultimately, he's a damn good right fielder. You could put him in center field and feel pretty comfortable. You could certainly put him in left field and feel comfortable about what he does as well. But Lane Thomas, don't forget about him going into 2024 because I think he can build off a big 2023. And I think in 2024, you might see a little bit more of an aggressive approach in between the lines. I think he's going to steal a little bit more bases and maybe be a little bit more selective because he's going to have the opportunities. It's just a matter of fact if he can take advantage of them. Thank you all for making Locked On Nets your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, check us out over on YouTube. Search Locked On Nationals wherever you get your podcasts, but including on YouTube, and hit that subscriber button. Next, let's talk about Sean Doolittle. You love him. You know him. He's your new Nationals pitching coach in flux. I'll explain. It. And I have a tinfoil hat theory about that, but I'll explain that a little bit more after I tell you guys about our good friends over at Jace Medical. And guys, I know we come to sports to escape from some of the crazy realities of real life, but can we just take a minute to talk about preparing for real, for real life? Because according to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of the worst flu season in over a decade. This is scary. I can't imagine a more helpless feeling than if Becky or one of my kids got sick while a supply chain issue kept them from real life saving medication that they needed. Thankfully, we'll be okay because of Jace Medical. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including UTIs, respiratory infections, sinusitis, skin infections, among others. This stuff could happen to any of us. So visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter. It will be reviewed by a board certified physician and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com and use offer code locked on and get $20 off your order. Again, go to jacemedical.com and use offer code locked on and get $20 off your order. Thank you all for making Locked On Nets your first listen every single day as we are free and available wherever you get your podcast. So yesterday, middle of the day, they announced, the Washington Nationals announced that Sean Diddle, Doolittle has been hired as a pitching strategist, which, if you don't really know, is basically a middle band for analytics in between players and as well as the coaches and just kind of bearing that arms. Sean Doolittle has kind of always been overlooked as one of the better baseball minds in the sport. Sean Doolittle, we know that here. I think a lot of people love Sean Doolittle, as you should. World Series champion, hero here in D.C., end of story. But what Sean Doolittle has also kind of done, and it's kind of just slept under the wire here because you have guys like Max Scherzer in the past, Steven Strasburg, real technicians of the game. Sean Doolittle is on that speed and maybe even a little tick above those guys. Sean Doolittle is a genius. He's kind of like a scientist out there. The way that he has just progressed throughout time and has kind of transformed his pitches, it's not just from talent, even though obviously it is talent, but it's also the use of analytics. Sean Doolittle has always had analytics in his corner, in which, if you know, if you're an everydayer, you know what I say. This team, they have not really done analytics all too well, but they are certainly picking it up, and Sean Doolittle is at the forefront of this. So he's going to be a pitching strategist that will kind of be the middleman from the front office slash analytics side of it, getting that information from them into the player's hands and then utilizing it with the players. This is what you should do in this scenario. This is where the pitch location should be going against this batter in this scenario. Whatever the analytics are, whatever the number that you want to equate to, Sean Doolittle, he knows it. He's one of the brighter minds when it comes to analytics and baseball, especially when it comes to just transforming that information and doing it onto the field. 
that is always something that he has been credited for throughout his career and kind of with talking with people throughout baseball. He's one of the brighter minds to come with it. Codify Baseball, an account that I think you all follow at this point, heavy in analytics, obviously. They love this move as well. They know that Sean Doolittle is kind of, again, at the forefront of this analytics movement, really a key part of that Nationals 2019 run as well, which kind of makes it a cherry on top of this whole thing. But Sean Doolittle, this is going to be a good thing. Number one for Sean Doolittle, because my tinfoil hat theory, maybe they're planting a seed for Sean Doolittle to officially kind of take that pitching coach hat next offseason. I don't know. I'm not going to sit here and say that's what's going to happen. But with what baseball is right now, with what Davey Martinez does, Davey Martinez trusts Sean Doolittle and Mike Rizzo trusts Sean Doolittle, the Larner family, they trust Sean Doolittle. I think that this could be kind of a step in the direction of him taking over as pitching coach someday here in the DMV. And in fact, I would love that move. And I really kind of hope that he's kind of the acting pitching coach behind the scene that a lot of players are getting the information from. Because I know one thing, the Nationals, they've got a lot of young pitchers in their farm system right now, and as well as up in the major league roster, that a lot of these guys are really going to rely on analytics. They want it. Josiah Gray, he wants analytics. Jake Irvin, he's going to want analytics. All these different guys, Sean Doolittle is going to help get that information to him. Now, I'm not saying Jim Hickey already doesn't do that. He certainly does. But I think it's going to mean a little bit more coming from, again, a former World Series champion within this organization that a lot of people already inside the organization have a ton of respect for and have been teammates with, like Victor Robles and Patrick Corbin, that can vouch for him. I think it's a really interesting hire. And ultimately, I think it's a great thing for this organization. This is what you should be doing. This is what the Nationals should be doing going forward. But we'll just have to see if it works out for him. But Sean Doolittle. Nation's capital, back. He is back. What a story. Thank you all for making Locked On Nats your first listen every single day as we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, if you haven't done so already, check us out over on YouTube. Just search Locked On Nationals if you like it. And if you don't like it, hit the subscriber button, give us a thumbs up, whatever you may be, leave a comment. I'll try to respond to them as they come in. But of course, I will catch you guys on the flip side as this offseason goes on. January 18th tomorrow, will the Nationals do something? I guess we'll never know.